Hi, this is Roger. Uh, I've been uh, going to YouTube to learn about tips and tricks on how to do certain home improvement projects. And uh, I put together a system for taking care of ducks and duck ponds and duck waste. And I thought I'd return the favor and share what I have accomplished over the years. Uh, we have a small farm, I guess you could say. We have a, some goats, some chickens, and some ducks. And the ducks have a pond and they produce eggs. They're more pets than anything else. The trick is to allow them to have a pond and enjoy that without that pond becoming essentially a septic tank. And over the years, I've been fine tuning a system that's actually at this point working pretty well steady state. It um, tends to stay clean enough that I only have to really empty it and clean it maybe once or twice a year. Uh, so let me show you what we're doing. Here, here are the ducks. We have uh, about uh, 12 or 12 ducks. And they're your garden variety ducks. They're good egg producers. They're a lot of fun. They have cool personalities. They'll eat out of your hand sometimes. So it's a lot of fun. So here's our pond. It's a very simple pond with a EPDM liner. Same as you'd have for a fish pond, a koi pond. In any case, the, the system for water circulation and cleansing involves three pumps at this point. So it's a little bit uh, intense, but it seems to be what's necessary to do the job. The first is a simple system where oh, on this side you have a skimmer and a submersible pump that sucks the fluid in from the surface and puts it through a net to get gross materials that float and some mud and slime and such and collects them that you have to manually empty. And it pumps the water through a pipe which dumps it out, essentially a waterfall on the other side. So on this side, if we look inside, we'll see the net and then buried deep in here If I can just secure it here, we essentially have a submersible pump. This is an alpine pump. They, the problem with these pumps is they tend to clog. You do have to clean them now and then, even if you use a net. And they do tend to wear out in this environment being that we're dealing with duck waste and not just fish. So that's the first part of the system. That's pretty basic as far as keeping some of the gross waste, materials, leaves, feathers that accumulate. The second pump is uh, what I added next. It's a small pump that is used uh, in an external system to filter. The material. So it goes through a small hose and it runs continuously and it carries basically water from mid level of the pond and puts it into some filtration tanks that I'll show you in a minute. The third, which is connected to that large white flexible tube, is a fairly heavy duty uh, sump type pump. It's designed to handle solids. And it sits essentially at the bottom of the pond. The pond is about two to four feet, well, two to three feet deep. Anyway, it sits at the bottom and its job is to intermittently run and collect sediment. It runs through a filter trap and a one-way valve. 
and that's the one that carries the highest volume. This is the Wayne pump. So I have a whole series of hoses and pipes here that will go to this other area, which is essentially the treatment plant. So these series of six tubs were the first thing I built. If you see at the end here, these small tubes that are running continuously, they're attached to that small pump I just showed you. And these two, the two, the two sets of three are the same. You'll see it'll fill up this tub and then it'll cascade down to the next by gravity and down to the next by gravity. And then it finally goes to a collection system that goes by gravity and dumps back into the pond. So what these things are, if you look, they're essentially uh, rain, uh, those 50 gallon barrels. You plug each side, you cut them in half and you can make these tubs. And each one at the bottom has a spigot that's used to empty them. And if we look at these and look at the water, it looks okay, but if you dig deeper, you'll see there's a sediment. So that sediment collects to the point where it essentially will fill the tub. Now in theory, each tub has less sediment because as it cascades through sediment deposits. So in the third tub, there's no sediment. And the water coming out this end is relatively clear of sediment. What I put in these tubs in the summer months are these um, uh, water hyacinths. So you can see where they just duplicate and sprout additional plants. And if the weather gets warm, we're in Seattle, so it's only maybe six months a year that these will grow. These things will uh, reproduce very quickly and fill these tubs very quickly to the point where I can harvest them and feed them to the ducks. So you can see there's excitement and they devour these things like piranhas So that's quite good. So essentially these, the duck waste is filtered and grows these plants that are quite pretty. And then you could feed them to the ducks if you'd like. Or sell them. Other little floating plants, the ducks like uh, them are all also, and th they can grow either on purpose or as a contaminant. So that's the first system I built. The second system is the more industrial strength filtration system. So that bigger pump in the pond pipes water up into a main pipe here. And that water stream goes through a variety of systems. The first is that vertical pipe there where it goes fresh and drips right into a roof garden. It's actually the roof, the ducks, over the ducks uh, outdoor area. And in there grow water mint and cattails and different types of water plants. That dies off a bit in the winter, but it's pretty abundant. And those plants I don't do much with. You can feed them to the goats. They like them. Anyway, so that's one area. But then the second area where most of the water goes, a very small amount goes into that garden. Most of it goes 
up through into these tubs. I might add to supplement this water here, I took a tap off and while that pump runs, it's not running right now, those um, pipes supplement that water coming from the small pump. So essentially it adds volume to this filtration system. All right, the main volume goes into these big tubs that I'll show you in a moment. I'm going to turn the pump on. The pump runs about 15 minutes out of the hour, mostly for economy of electricity as that's a one and a half horsepower pump and it, um, it consumes a lot of electricity and it probably doesn't need to run that much. I simply have the pump on a little timer here in a, in a dry box and I can set it to run by just putting it on outlet on. And that sets the pump running and the water flow. So we'll watch it in action. So we can see the white pipes are adding to the mix. I can adjust the volume there just to add more volume through this filtration system here. There's no real hard scientific reason for the volumes, but I sort of look at what the systems will handle. Now, these two big tubs, they're vertically oriented 55-gallon 55 tubs, and these are vortex filters, filtration systems. So on the top, I have a couple of pipes beneath that are moving the water in two directions. And then on the top, this actually is an outflow that goes by gravity out. And this one's the same. You can sort of see it, perhaps the, vorte the vortex action there. Kind of works like a Dyson vacuum cleaner. The vortex is supposed to take the sediment and bring it to the periphery and let it settle. And then the, the outflow is in the center. You can see where that little vortex is. So that water exits that system here, and then it can go in a number of directions. One is it can go to this aqua, aquaponic system. So some would call this a quaquaponics if you want to be cute. So anyway, I've been trying to fine tune this system and I've had some success this year. So what you see here is this water basically under gravity coming out of the vortex system. It's already been, uh, all the, the set, much of the sediment has been removed from it because I don't want a lot of sediment coming into this system. But anyway, the micronutrients and such from the duck waste and such are, are of course still in there. And it goes through these tubs in a similar method as those other tubs. So this one I haven't put anything in yet, nor this one. This one actually I tried some things. But here's an example of a tub that's working out. So right now lettuce is the big winner. That's a crop that seems to be doing well. So I've tried two different methods. One is a simple foam uh, with holes in it, drill with a hole saw, and then you put these net cups in that you can get. You can put these uh, clay pebbles in. They're used for aquaponics. Here's the bag I bought. high quality, natural clay, etc. So anyway, those clay pebbles, they're very light, they absorb water, and they, they make a nice space for roots to form. So you end up with a lettuce plant with roots that are hanging out into the water. And as the plants get bigger, 
you get a bigger root system. It seems to be working out pretty well. The lettuce plant seems to be pretty happy. Here's another one in this, in this situation. I use this uh, foil backed material that you can buy at a hardware store. It seems to be a little more rugged with the foil on it. Now these two last tubs, these aren't barrels. These are actually the concrete mixing tubs you get at Lowe's or Home Depot. And they're shallower. You can see compared to the other tubs, they're a bit shallower, but you don't need the depth. And in these, I actually have filled them with lava rock, but then I put a tray within them that has the clay pebbles. I guess the lava rock is probably cheaper than the pebbles. So this seems to work as well. These plants are in there. They are forming a root system in the pebbles and they're growing pretty well. It's probably overcrowded. Anyway, I'm still fine tuning how to do this. I've tried a few other things. I've tried some spinach plants. They don't seem to work for whatever reason. And then the lettuce plants are the ones that seem to be thriving. So. You can do your own research and figure out which plants are best. So when the water cascades through these tubs and leaves the tubs, it goes through the system, another gravity system of pipes, and then drains by gravity back to the collection point there, where all of the drainage collects and goes back into the pond. Once again, it's been somewhat cleaned of sediment. The nutrients have been taken out to some extent by any number of these plants. And then that pipe by gravity has found itself coming across here. This is the collection point for the roof garden, right? And then it goes underground and then comes back up. And then you get the water returning to the pond right there. So there's a couple areas where the water comes back. The, the small pipe, the white one you can see over there is from those six smaller, six, six tubs with the water hyacinth. And this one is from the remainder of the system. So that, hi rascal, that is the system in summary. It seems to be working okay. The trick is you have to clean the filter in here. You have to clean the filter on that small pump. Once in a while you clean the filter in that trap there. You gotta make sure in the system itself you don't have any outlets that clog because if you have one that clogs what you'll find is the uh, tubs will start to overflow and then your pond will empty so that'll happen now and then and you have to debug where the water is being um, spilled so that's the quaquaponic system Hopefully this gives you some ideas and helps those who have a duck pond or want to and how to manage the waste.